What? That's insane! This turned out so much better than I thought. Hey guys and welcome back to a brand new exciting episode of Quarantine Photography. In today's episode, we're going to be trying to recreate an effect from a TikToker called Lindoko, where he makes himself disappear inside of different objects. If you don't know what the Quarantine Photography Challenge is, I basically try and challenge myself to create three awesome photos in my house during quarantine. If you guys would like to get involved, then simply use the hashtag GHV photo challenge and the best photos will be featured in some of my episodes. So without further ado, let's get creative. Okay, so for the first photo, you're gonna need a picture frame or a tripod, and we're gonna be using these two objects to create some pretty cool effects in Photoshop and make it look like some of our body has actually disappeared. Okay, so for the first of the two shots, we're gonna be using a picture frame, and basically you're gonna have the picture frame in front of you like this, and then in Photoshop afterwards, it's gonna be super simple, but we're gonna remove the inside of the frame and take another photo of the background and put that in here so that it looks like the part of our body that's inside the frame has actually disappeared. Quick tip that I forgot to mention is that you should be shooting in manual focus because we wanna make sure that the shot that we are in has the same focus as our background shot so that when we put them together they blend really well. Right, so I've just finished the first set of photos with the frame and they look really, really good. We're gonna go onto the tripod shot now. After we've done the tripod photo, we're gonna go inside and try out one more shot with a laptop and see how that turns out as well. And then we're gonna get to the editing stage, which is gonna be super, super simple. Okay, so I've just finished off with the last photo outside of the tripod. I'm gonna pack up my things, head inside, and then we'll get onto the next shot with the laptop. <laughs> Almost forgot the most important thing. Let's get out of here. Okay, so for the last photo, I've basically got my laptop set up on a table. Um, and what I'm going to try and do is I'm gonna try and make it look like I'm peeking out the back of the computer screen um, when there's nothing actually in the screen and I'm not actually behind it. So basically I'm gonna go behind the computer screen, try a few different poses, maybe going like this and peeking over the top of the screen. And then I'm gonna get rid of the screen, put the background on the screen like we've been doing in all the previous photos to hopefully get some form of cool looking effect which could create a really awesome photo. One tip for this photo is to make sure that your screen is switched off because we're going to be removing the screen. So we don't want any light that would have been coming on the screen to be on the table or on the keyboard. Okay, so I've just finished the final shot of the computer. They looked really, really awesome, as did the other ones. So now it's time to go onto the computer, open up Photoshop, and start editing these photos. Okay, so once you've loaded the photos on your computer, select the one you want, right click on it, hit open with and choose Photoshop. Once it's opened up in Photoshop, you're first going to hit the little lock icon next to the image layer to make sure that it's no longer a background and that you can now move the layer around. Next, import the background photo that you took earlier and make sure that it goes underneath your first layer. So basically you want to have the layer with your subject on top of your background layer. Okay, now you're going to select your top layer, hit P on your keyboard to bring up the pen tool and now we're going to mask out the inside of the picture frame. Make sure to zoom into your image so that you can get this really, really accurate because the more accurate you get it, the better the results will be. Once you've finished making your mask, simply right click on it and hit make selection. For this photo, I'm gonna set the feather between two and zero. So fiddle around with this and see which one works better for you. Once you've hit okay, go over to the edit tab, find the option for clear. Once you've hit this, it should remove the parts inside of your mask and your background should appear inside of your picture frame. If for some reason your background and your subject shots are not lining up, go down to your background layer, select it, hit control T and you can move around your background to better align it inside of the frame. For the tripod shot, I did exactly the same thing, except when I did my mask, I made sure that I was extra, extra careful with it because this was gonna be a much more difficult mask. I also changed my feather for this shot to zero 
because I knew if I got my mask accurate, I wouldn't even need a feather. Now go to your top layer, right click on it and hit duplicate. Then go up to the filters tab, go down to blur and find radial blur. We're gonna set the amount to 15, the blur method to zoom and the quality to best. Then hit OK. Now your picture is going to be full of blurry lines. To get rid of this, we're going to select our layer with the blur, go down and select mask. Hit B on your keyboard to bring up the brush and we're simply gonna brush away the parts around the body so that the lines now lead towards the center and get less and less as less as they go towards the center. If you end up making a mistake with the brush, simply hit X on your keyboard and brush over the spots and it will come back. Again, I did the exact same thing for the tripod shot. I duplicated my top layer, went up to filter, selected radial blur, had the same settings, made a mask and brushed away the blur around my subject. For both of these photos, I also added a little bit of saturation to both of them just to make them pop a little bit more. While editing the picture frame and tripod shot in Lightroom, I decided that I wanted to remove my face because I wanted to create a mysterious sort of look. So what I did for both of these photos is I made a brush adjustment, brushed over my face and dropped the exposure completely. This is how I managed to get rid of my face. Now for the photo with the computer. Again, I started off by doing the same thing as the previous shots. I imported my shots, made sure it wasn't a background by hitting the lock button. I imported my background, put that underneath my first shot and then I went on to mask around my hand and the computer screen. Now, since my hand was blurry, what I decided to do is when I had made my selection, I made sure that I set my feather to five because I wanted this to sort of look similar to how blurry my hand was. And I thought that if I had a hard mask, it wouldn't suit the image as well. After that, I again used the same radial blur effect and I made a new mask and painted around it. For this photo, I decided to not add any extra saturation. So starting off with the first set of photos, which was the disappearing shot with the picture frame, I think these turned out really well. I'm super happy with the result. And I have two photos that I really, really like. The first one is me holding the frame with two hands and it's sort of more in the center of my body. I really liked how this turned out. I really like the effect where I've taken away my face to make it look a little bit more mysterious and how nicely I managed to get the background to fit into the picture frame. It took quite a lot of masking, but it did end up turning out really well. And my absolute favorite out of the two is this one of me holding it with one hand. I don't know why it's my favorite. I just like like how my hand is hanging by my side and it sort of cuts it off a little bit. Also, again, I really like the color grade I put on this and the sort of radial blur effect that I've put on this just to add to the whole effect. And ultimately, I'd probably give this photo a nine out of 10 just because I really like the way it turned out and how everything sort of came together, including how clean the mask was and how cool and mysterious the look is with me not having a face. Moving on to a similar type of shot, this time with the tripod. This was a lot more difficult to get because out of the 50 I took, there was only one where my hands were in a nice enough position to be able to mask and not make it look weird. So this was the photo that I managed to come out with. It took a hell of a lot of masking because I had to go through each and every part of the tripod and remove it so that it would cut me in half. And I have to say, I think I did a pretty good job of it. I think it turned out really well. And again, I like the mysterious feeling it gives me with me not having a face and how it sort of cuts me in half. I also like how my right hand is sort of just holding it and it's not connected to any part of my body and ultimately I like how clean the mask is. This photo I'd probably also give a 9 out of 10 because again I like the mysterious feel it gives and I really like the radial blur and the color grade that I put on the entire image. Then we go on to the computer shots. I did manage to get three that I sort of liked. Only one really turned out close to what I wanted it to. So the whole idea of this photo was to try and get me sort of peeking over the top of the computer screen almost as if I was coming out of the back of the computer while the computer showed the background to again give that sort of disappearing effect. Starting off with my least favorite one, the one with my hands on the keyboard. I don't really like how the whole photo turned out. I did manage to line up the background and the foreground pretty well, and I put that radial blur effect on, but I just really don't like this photo too much. I'd probably give it a six out of 10. Moving on to my second favorite photo, which was where I sort of had more of a grip around the top of the computer. This one was slightly better to me because it sort of came close to what I was trying to do. And I like how the radial blur had a nice effect on the front of the computer and overall this was just sort of the second best photo. I really don't think the first one and this one were too great. Now this one is my favorite one again because I seem to really like this mysterious look that having no face gives with the hoodie. I think having my hand in front of the lens like this gives the photo a little bit more depth. I also liked how the radial blur came off the front of the computer and ultimately out of the three computer shots this one came out the best. I'd probably give this one a seven or an eight out of ten. Maybe seven and a half. So those were the three creative shots we managed to get today. 
If you're gonna try any of them out, then use the hashtag GHV photo challenge when you post them to Instagram. Let me know which one was your favorite down in the comments below. And while you're down in the comments section, drop your Instagram handle and I'll definitely come give you a follow. If you wanna watch the previous episodes of Quarantine Photography, I'll link them up here or up here or in the description below for you guys to check out. That is the end of this Quarantine Photography episode. Remember, if you wanna participate in the challenge, simply tag me or use the hashtag GHV photo challenge and you guys can stand a chance to be featured in one of my quarantine photography episodes. If you aren't already subscribed, please smash the subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you so much for 2,000 subscribers. Thank you so much for the support. I'd really appreciate it if you'd leave a like on this video. If you haven't subscribed, then please do. Leave a comment down below, drop your Instagram handle, get involved in the challenge. It's really push our creativity during COVID-19 so that when this horrible pandemic is done, we can be even more creative than before. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I'll catch you in the next one.